What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I'm always contending for the faith once, for all, delivered to the saints. And on this episode, we are continuing the story of our faith, which is a confession truly worth dying for. Join me for chapter three. So if you've really been liking these videos and you want to follow me through, because we've got 20, what, six more? <laughs> Confessions of faith that we would rather go to our grave than have taken away from us. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you can be made aware when there's a new one. And I'm throwing some other videos in the mix as well. And be sure to share it with your friends who maybe have a question on this particular article of our faith. So we've gone over two chapters of our faith already, two confessions of our faith worth dying for, not just the whole, oh, I'm a Christian, the, the, the nuances of our faith, the details of our faith. Chapter one, there is a God. And this God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. Chapter two, original sin, that we are sinful from the moment that we are conceived. The wages of sin is death. There's evil in the world. Welcome to chapter three. Chapter three of our faith is the Son of God. <laughs> God's answer to the problem of evil. So as before, we'll go old school and then we'll have some thoughts on it and then we will conclude. Join me, woo, did it the other way this time, for chapter three. Chapter three, the Son of God. Our churches teach that the Word, that is, the Son of God, assumed the human nature in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So there are two natures, the divine and the human, inseparably joined in one person. There is one Christ, true God and true man, who was born of the Virgin Mary, truly suffered, was crucified, died, and was buried. He did this to reconcile the Father to us and to be a sacrifice not only for original guilt, but also for all actual sins of mankind. He also descended into hell and truly rose again on the third day. Afterward, he ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father. There he forever reigns and has dominion over all creatures. He sanctifies those who believe in him by sending the Holy Spirit into their hearts to rule, comfort, and make them alive. He defends them against the devil and the power of sin. The same Christ will openly come again to judge the living and the dead, and so forth, according to the Apostles' Creed. Whoop. So, there is a God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, the Father, Maker of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And this answers the problem presented to us in chapter 2 of our faith, the story of our faith. God has done something about sin. He sent his son. God did something so miraculous, so mysterious, so outside of what any other religion is going to tell you. God became a part of his creation. God united himself to his creation to redeem it. He took upon himself that which he set out to save. He set out to save mankind, and so he incorporated into his divine nature our human nature. As our confession of faith has previously stated, there are two natures to the person of Jesus Christ, his divine nature and his human nature. He is 100% man, absolutely human, born of the Virgin Mary. He is also 100% God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, as the Nicene Creed says. He is begotten of the Father before all worlds. He is divine. He is born of the Virgin Mary. This God-man, Jesus Christ, is forever and eternally God-man. He is God and he is man. And there is so much confusion. Is it like two pieces of wood glued together? No, he has included absolutely, unequivocally into his divine nature, our human nature. He is God and man. 
This is how God has set to solve the problem of sin. That he was crucified, died, and buried. Why? To reconcile sinners to the Father. He has, uh, by the prophets of old, declared so many laws and decrees, be it civil, ceremonial, or moral, that do this and you will live. Well, this cannot be done. We cannot, as Luther says in the small catechism, by our own reason or strength, even so much as believe in God or come to him. We have to be called by the Holy Spirit. We cannot keep this law. So, God sent his Son into our flesh to obey the law, to be the one human being who by his own works, worthiness, and merit has achieved perfection and the right to spend eternity with God. And then, placed on that perfect man, the condemnation for the sin of us all. (laughs) God sent to us his son, and we rejected him. We nailed him to a cross to die. Oh, you claim to be God. Well, why don't you come off that cross then? Sorry, I had an itchy nose. Why don't you come off that cross, Jesus? Then we'll believe. But Jesus, on that cross, as staying on that cross, is doing the thing that only God can do. Be condemned in our place. To bear the full wrath of God in his human flesh. And God, in the person of Jesus Christ, died for our sins. The old hymn, O sorrow, dread, our God is dead upon the cross extended. This is the answer to the problem of sin for which the wage is death. That God would take on human flesh and as God and man in that flesh bear our death in our place. And then, having been killed, having been crucified, not really having been killed, having yielded his spirit and perfect faith and obedience, descending into hell to declare victory or sin, death, and the power of the devil. He rose again from the dead bodily, and he ascended into heaven. Why? To sit down at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, to rule over all of creation, and to plead for you. To intercede for you. So that when God looks upon you in your sin, Jesus shows him his hands and his feet and his side. And says, is this good enough? Does this please you, Father? And to us, when we die, God will say, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. God has solved through his son the problem of sin. That is chapter 3 of our faith. And that is all ultimately, truly a confession worth dying for, that there is a God, that we are sinful by our very nature, and God has incorporated into his divine nature our human nature to redeem us from the condemnation of our sin. Chapter 4, how do we know about this? (laughs) The church. Join me next time for chapter 4. Until then, May God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Your Highness, we have drawn up a confession of our faith, which I believe you will find blameless 